We can't hear you. Dr. Rowe, we can't hear you. Hello, we can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. Now the recording's in progress. Let's start over again. All okay, right. Okay, so, that's better. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Starts Lady. It's Dr. Rowe. It's April 20th. I was just commenting that my room here is full of books. Uh, my son's gone off into the wild to be a career guy as a airplane mechanic. And he is so excited to do that. So he moved out of town. That's my little moment of silence. And then my other big son was here uh, studying for his new job with the railroad and he left on Sunday. The other one left on Wednesday about a week and a half ago. Double boo, boo. So back to empty nesting. Well, I can't say that. We, our, our technician, Don, most of you have met Don. Uh, he lives here. So uh, we don't like an empty house and he likes free food and rent. So it works out for both of us. So anyways, he's a good guy. We love him. Here we tell people he's our kid's brother from another mother. So let me see, make sure this is recording. Hi, kitty, kitty, kitty. All righty. Um, my kitty's been so good. I'm just, I'm, I'm just in shock still that I can actually touch a cat. So, all right. So today we have three cooking demonstrations and we're going to talk about a fourth. So um, I knew that today was gonna be crazy. As you can tell, I'm still in my uh, committed to going out and taking a big walk clothes. So I figured if I got dressed in my walking clothes, I'd have to get out and walk, right? So that's the deal. And um, so I'm dressed like that, just casual. And I had some things going on this morning. I had another class, the McDougal class was this morning. We have a continuing education class that we're uh, reviewing for. So it's been kind of a crazy day and the phones and the people in the phones and everything coming to um, wanting us our undivided attention. So I'm making dinner tonight for a lady at church who had oral surgery today and she can't chew hard things. So she has to have soft stuff. And so we are, oh, look at the kids and the balls. Um, so, um, I'm trying to think of things that would be soft. So I'm going to ask you guys for your input and have you help me. Let me grab something lively here. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so, so far what I have is I made a soup and it has, um, I made it last night. I was thinking of Caroline when I was making it. I was making a carb load soup and uh, our preload, pre and it has vegetable broth, it has bok choy, cabbage, celery, and then it's got some little pressed rice. It's like just the rice that they've made into like little patties that cook up kind of like little round flat noodles. And uh, I put that all in there and it tastes really, really good, but I know she's not gonna be able to chew even the, the cabbage and the bok choy, even though it's soft. So I'm gonna blend that sucker and just stick it right in the blender and puree it and uh, take that over. I'm making these potato um, disc or bread, little tiny breads, little round breads. I rolled it into a ball with the mashed potatoes and the garlic and onion and some tapioca, a little bit of salt. I rolled it into balls and flattened it into little circles. And I've got one that's in a sheet that I just showed you. And I'm going to make some homemade hummus by just doing like we did the other day where we just take the can of chickpeas and some roasted red bell peppers and blend it all up and good to go there that she can put on the bread. That would be soft and filling. And then um, I've got uh, a smoothie bowl that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, her daughter's allergic to bananas. I've never known anybody allergic to bananas, but she's allergic to bananas. And so we, um, uh, can I close that? Yes. Um, so we're not doing it with bananas. I lost Diane. Where'd she go? Where'd you go? Lost her. Um, so uh, I'm doing it with just some acai, frozen acai, blueberries, and strawberries. All three of those will be frozen. 
And I might put just a little bit of honey in there because the daughter's also allergic to even um, stevia, which is made out of a plant. So I haven't known anybody to be allergic to a stevia either. So uh, we're gonna just use a little bit of um, raw local honey. And I remember her mom said that they do that now and then. So um, I'll make that for like a dessert. And then I'm thinking for the main course, um, let's see, where'd she go? She's in the participants waiting. There we go. Ta -da! There she is. Ta -da! We lost you, Diane. I came to the other computer because they oh, stopped okay. cutting grass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was thinking uh, something that would be soft would be my giant baked potatoes. I've got some of that cheese sauce I just made and uh, that's out of the cauliflower, roasted bell peppers. And uh, I can steam the broccoli until it's nice and tender uh, because I thought that would be soft and mushy that she could eat. What do you guys think? But sound like a, a plan. How bad was this oral surgery? Uh, well, she got, um, uh, I, if I understand correctly, she got hit with a airbag. And so they're like removing some teeth and doing some crowns or getting them ready for some crowns or something. So it's, it's pretty extensive. So I did remind her husband, no straws. Cause the first thing yeah, people yeah. do when they have oral surgery is drink out of a straw. And then they've got an air pocket of mm -hmm. pain, like shoot yourself in the foot pain, you know? And uh, so I reminded him of that. But uh, so I'm thinking the, uh, hummus on the soft potato bread mm -hmm. and I've got the um, for dessert the acai strawberry blueberry kind of a nice cream thing and then I'm thinking baked potato with broccoli with the cheese sauce on it and make sure that the broccoli I'm just going to use the crowns none of the stems just the the top 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 part I'll dice up the other stuff in our salad or something but uh, the very very top top part steam it just enough to make it soft and put it in there and put the cheese sauce on that. Um, what else you can you guys think of that would be soft that I could think of? Cause I might be taking food more than one day or for what more than one meal. So what do you think? If you had oral surgery, what would you eat Carolyn and Diane and Samantha? Like chili or other soups or oatmeal? Ooh, chili soup oatmeal yeah oatmeal is really oatmeal good yeah yeah so i could do some oatmeal up for them to have ready to go tomorrow morning because that that would be good for them they're very strict gluten-free and they're just now starting our our uh, way of eating program and so um the concept of giving up all meat and dairy was a little bit new to them and they have uh property and they have <coughs> And so they, you know, have eggs like all the time. And so um, right now she's going to start out by trying breakfast and lunch. And she will, if she has eggs, she says she'll do it for like a dinner meal so that the protein with just eggs and vegetables without any bread or hash browns or anything so that the, the it can get, you know, utilized a little bit better uh, away from the other meals. But um hopefully down the road she'll just make those chickens her bug eating pet friends so that somebody was telling me oh kelly in our group was talking on our group the other day about chickens and um how they um eat all the ants and bugs and some of them like the guinea hens they will kill snakes for you so i'm thinking maybe i need some of those and make them pets uh, because I said, well, what do I do with all the eggs? Cause I'm not gonna eat them. And I didn't know this about fowl, but they eat their own eggs. So she says, you scramble them up or hard boil them and feed them right back to them again. And I was like, hmm, that's an interesting concept. That is disgusting. I'm that sorry, is really I had to disgusting. unmute to say that. That is yes. so disgusting. <laughs> What? I didn't um, know that. Did, did anybody know that? Do not jump off of it, Jude, but also, um, uh cauliflower steam oh. cauliflower is really yummy okay steam cauliflower. now i have actually in the past and it just reminded me because it's on the same page here i used to steam the cauliflower and mix it in with my oatmeal 
Um, I've done it with zucchini quite a bit. I love zucchini in my oatmeal. To me, it tastes like uh, shredded apple. You know, I shred the zucchini and cook at the same time as the oatmeal, put my cinnamon in there, and it tastes like I've got apples in my oatmeal. So that might be a little trick. Um, zucchini, steamed cauliflower. I am really getting into that steamed cauliflower, loving it. I'm also on a kick for sumac. You might see that in my video that we're going to review today. But um, I said I did three little cooking demos for you earlier this week, uh, over the weekend. And so I put them up on YouTube and we're just going to go in and watch them one at a time. But let's start with uh, Caroline first. Uh, what do you have to say for us today? Are you at home today? Yeah, I've got the day off today. Nice. Hi. Yeah. Um, oh, that's day off day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything new and exciting? How did your soup load go this week? Um, I didn't do it for every meal, but I've done it for a few, and I think it's been good. Um, I don't know. Yes. I'm running a little groceries again, so. <laughs> I had I had that soup um, today for lunch, and I'm stuffed. I don't know how I'd have any room for anything else right now. Um, and it was just one bowl. It did have those little rice biscuits in it. I guess yours is, doesn't have that. It's just the vegetables. Yeah. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone and threw in my uh, little little rice discs. They they look like watercress when they're in the package, but it's just firm pressed rice and water. And uh, but they boil up like a soft, chewy noodle, super soft. So okay, cool. Uh, Diane, anything new and exciting over there? Yeah, I've got a bad cold and a cough, and I can't smell or taste anything. Uh oh. <laughs> I hope it's from the cold and the cough and not COVID weirdness no. going on. That's no. all you need, right? No, it's my seasonal allergy, you know, get sick thing. Yeah. Um, speaking of COVID, the latest and greatest news out there, I'm sure you've heard it, is talking about snake venom in the water. Have you heard about that? Um, they're saying that they're, uh, they're finding that people that have died of COVID, their blood is showing a chemical that is almost identical to snake venom. And some people are thinking that it is snake venom. I haven't researched it beyond the point of can it be removed from the water? Because there, there's talk that they're going to use that like they did fluoride to get it out to the population. Do you have fluoride up and chloride in your uh, Canada in your water, Carolyn? Yeah, pretty sure it is. Okay. So um, the problem that I have, oh, look at that kangaroo. Hello, kangaroo. Oh my gosh. Right here on Live Starts Lady, we have a kangaroo for you. Okay. Um, that is too adorable. Um, anyways, um, they had, the, the fluoride is put in the water in such a quantity that it's supposed to quote unquote, um, reduce tooth decay. And um, that test in the research, if you do the research on it, and my kids spent quite a time researching this when we homeschooled, and it was researched in a neighborhood on, uh, with families with children that were already affluent, that already had dental care, that already brushed their teeth twice a day. And because they had less tooth decay in that neighborhood, it got now spread to everyone. Everybody gets fluoride in their water. Um, but because it is a prescription type drug that dentists have to have special licensing to even handle, uh, the fact that it's in the water in a baby bottle that's eight ounces is just as full of fluoride as an eight ounce glass that you or I are drinking at adult weight and size. So I believe they're overdosing the children. If it worked, this is just my thought from Dr. Rowe 101 here. If fluoride in the water prevented tooth decay, why do children and adults still have tooth decay? Hmm? Let's think about that for two seconds and go, hmm. All right. So you have to have dental care. You have to brush your teeth. And that's how you prevent tooth decay. It's not by polluting the water with fluoride. So back to the, the venom thing. 
just to touch on that briefly, because like I said, I do not know if it's in the in the COVID vaccine. I don't know uh, the pros and cons or who's right and who's wrong. You got people telling you it's there. You got people telling you that it's not there. Some people saying it's not a big deal. I don't know. I'm just trying to stay out of that a little bit. But when we talk about our water systems and how the first stages of that water system is using reverse osmosis technology, and it removes, uh, let me share this with you here. Let me get the fluoride screen up here. It, uh, the reverse osmosis membrane is marketed and shown to remove some of these toxins. So let me see here. If I go to documents, I go to forms, packet, there we go. And done stuff right here. Okay. What does it remove? So let's go down here and find fluoride. It removes 95 to 98%. I've seen other statistics that showed it at being 99.9. .9. I mean, that's a pretty strong statement there to remove fluoride, but it also removes all these other toxins. And there's another page after that that it removes, um, but chloride, chlorine, all this other stuff, all these other things that are toxic that get into the water system. And so I'm telling people that if we can remove this much of the fluoride and this much of the aluminum up to 99%, amoebics, algae, cysts, arsenic, bacteria, barium, calcium, chlorine, chloride, chromate, copper, cyanide, uh, giardia, cysts. Oh, that just sounds attractive at 99.9% .9 removal. Thank you very much. Lead, manganese, ma magnesium, uh, all the way over here to mercury, mold, nickel, nitrate, phosphate, uh, potassium, protozoa, radioactivity, uh, sediment, selenium, silicate, silver, sodium, strontium, uh, sulfate, Tiosulfate, trimethylene, uh, volatile organic uh, organics, total volatile organics, zinc, and 24 D. If you can remove them with such accuracy, and not to mention these additional ones that it takes out and removes, rejects all of these things here and rejects these here. Um, with that in mind, I'm telling them that I am confident that they would be able to remove the fluoride. It also removes, and I don't see it listed on here. I've got to find my other paper that does, but it talks about pharmaceutical residue. Pharmaceutical residue is caused when you have um, uh, people peeing pharmaceuticals back into the water system, or you have people dumping leftover pills down the toilet, that's going to all get into the water system. And I have other literature that talks about removing the pharmaceuticals in that 90, I believe it's 98 to 99% ratio, you know, ratio. You don't see 100% on any of those because they're going to cover their butt and they're going to put 99.9 .9 or 99.99 .99 or whatever, uh, because if somebody were to say, I got this, there's that little window that it crawled through. They can't claim 100% removal or they'd be sued, I'm sure, up the wazoo. So that being said, I, I don't want you to worry too much about that if you have the ability to filter that out of your water like um, some of y'all do here. So um, let's go on here. Samantha, do you have anything to offer us for your dietary um, knowledge this week? I don't have knowledge, I was, but I have a question. Okay. Um, so you know how I, I uh, did the jackfruit and made it, you know, like pulled pork? Yes. Do you think, do you think if we, um, if I did instead of the um, barbecue sauce and instead of it being shredded, if I like cut it up in little bitty pieces, and then seasoned it with, say, um, taco seasoning that I could Ooh. make it into taco meat? I totally think you could. I think that would be delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm thinking about yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, how was the texture for you? It was great. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Now, um, now in, in that jackfruit, there was, um, you know, the little bitty things that looked like, you know, big seeds or whatever. 
Um, yeah, you, you don't use those. Really? Because we ate them. You uh, ate them? <laughs> I think they're like an almond yeah. where you pop them open and there's something inside of that thing. Yeah, something like, yeah, well, I don't know. But the thing is, we, uh, I did not tell John and Summer that it was jackfruit. So Summer assumed that it was um, garlic. <laughs> And okay. John, John just was like, okay, whatever. He didn't care what it was, <laughs> um, but That's he enjoyed cool. it. Um, okay, I need to answer this. So okay. mute me and I'll, I'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right. Um, so that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that she got the jackfruit out of a can because an actual jackfruit is that big, huge, watermelon sized fruit that has bumps all over it. And when you take it apart, it is so full of latex, that sticky, stretchy, gooey, sticky. It, it, I don't know how anybody deals with those, those poor people that harvest that. I have no idea how they keep that and keep their hands. They got to wear a special kind of glove because I think it would eat your hand over time because it's so sticky in between each of those little knobs of jackfruit. And uh, I bought one one time never do it again. I'll never grow it. I will leave that up to the professionals and I'll go to the Indian store and I'll buy it in the can. Uh, so it might be cooked just a little bit. Maybe that's why she was able to eat that seed that was in the middle. So if not, they're going to turn in the jackfruit. No. <laughs> oh, I didn't say jackrabbit. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying jackfruit and I'm acting like a bunny rabbit. What's wrong with me? All right. So let's get going here. I want to show you some things. Uh, some of these you might have seen before, but let me go ahead and share the screen again and walk you through what um, I was making this week and see if you like this technique better. That definitely goes a lot faster by doing it this way. I got one of these videos down to like two minutes. So uh, let's go over here and we're going to go share screen. Back again. And we're going to go to here and we're going to my uh, Facebook page, which when you go searching in Facebook or not Facebook, excuse me, YouTube, you type health natural solutions all together. It's a name that I've had for my clinic since before we incorporated and blended the all water company with the health natural solutions and called it uh, all water and health. OK, so uh, but then you can go to my different videos and things. And we started out with uh, Mac, well, we didn't start with that. We started with Al Gratin. So let's start here first. All right, welcome to the starchlady.com. We've got another fun video today. I've got my two pans here ready to make some Al Gratin Can you all potatoes. Hear me? Al Gratin potatoes is one of the first dinners that my husband and I shared 30 years ago this year. It'll be 30 years. And we've got some already. Uh, russet potatoes that we're going to use. Can somebody unmute and tell me if you can hear? Yeah, I can I hear. Can, okay, so you can hear the video. Okay, okay, great. All right, here we go. Um, we're going to actually thicken up the cheese sauce. We're going to do it with the cauliflower. We've got over here in the uh, pot. It's all steamed, ready to go. Oh, that steamed up my phone. And then we have a little bit of tapioca starch. I'm out of nutritional yeast, so we're kind of modifying it with the tapioca starch today, making it a little bit um, thicker cheese. Onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, we've got the roasted red bell peppers, a little bit of dry mustard. And then we're gonna uh, roast some uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli in a maple glaze sauce. And we're gonna top the um, au gratin potatoes with some green onions from the garden. Let's get started with the cheese sauce here in the blender. Okay, so filling up the blender with just two of the steamed medium or small heads of cauliflower. After this blends down a little bit, I'll add the third one. So I wanna make a bunch of sauce because I'm in the mood for some mac and cheese later this week that we're gonna use uh, extra for, okay? To the cauliflower, we're gonna add some onion powder probably about two or three tablespoons right there. We're going to add about the same of the garlic powder. Garlic powder always comes out easier. I have no idea why I'm afraid to ask. Okay, I like a little garlicky flavor. 
Got a teaspoon of dry mustard, a half cup of tapioca starch. And this is not cornstarch, this is tapioca starch for a reason. It's going to give it that stretchy pull feel that we like. Normally you'd use a full jar with the liquid content packed in water of the That's roasted it. red bell peppers. But because I buy mine in the larger jars from the Indian store, um, I'm going to use two, uh, a full cup, but I'm going to measure it out and I'm going to have to add a little bit of uh, juice to it to measure. That's one. Here's two. And let's get a little liquid like that. Good job. Okay, everything's in there. Now we're going to blend until it's nice and creamy and smooth. It's creamy down, and so we're going to add that other head of cauliflower we talked about. Now that's going to be a full jar. See how it looks. Oh yeah, nice and creamy. And even though it's nice and thick there, we're going to make it a little bit more stretchy. This is kind of uh saucy right now which is great we can use it just like this but we're gonna make it a little stretchy because of the tapioca starch we're gonna put it on a hot skillet and stir it around a little bit look at that beautiful cheesy color and we've got it in the skillet and it's starting to talk back but we're gonna heat it up a little bit let's turn the heat down just a little bit it's a little bit too violent okay That nice and stirred around and as it starts to cool off tapioca unlike cornstarch and just thickening in it it's going to give it a stretchy texture tapioca starch or tapioca flour is also the secret ingredient for making excellent gluten-free bread that's what gives it its balance and elasticity so we give this a little bit more cheesy can texture here by stirring it around like this and get it nice and hot. So because I have three heads of cauliflower in here, one of the things I forgot to do and I just corrected it was I only put one uh, half cup of the tapioca starch and because I had three heads I needed to increase that to a cup and a half of cornstarch, maybe just a little bit more. And so it's about uh, half to three quarters uh, cup up to one cup per head of cabbage or cauliflower, depending on how, what size your head is. So if you notice, this is getting a lot more stretchy as it starts to heat up. If you follow this, the same exact recipe without the roasted red bell peppers to get this beautiful, rich color and added vegetable benefit, it uh, comes out like mozzarella cheese. Great for lasagnas and stuff like that, but look, that's much more stretchy and chewy more than nacho cheese it's just a little bit stretchy just like you'd want it for like macaroni and cheese texture so next we're going to ladle in a good scoop of the stretchy cheese sauce into our baking pan and make a layer next we're cutting the uh au gratin potatoes from the cold potato from yesterday they make a resistant starch into about quarter inch slices that will layer like we would lasagna back and forth with the cheese. As much as my youngest son loves this cheese sauce, I have to remember to call it cheese-like sauce because he hates it when us plant-based eaters call things things that they're not. He says, call it what it is, it's sauce. <laughs> so we're just gonna layer a layer, add some more cheese sauce, and it's one slice short of a full three layers. I'm going to cut in some green onions from the garden. And sprinkle those on top. Make them all pretty. I'm going to put some breadcrumbs on top, but I somehow don't have it. I don't know where they went, so I'm going to use some of these gluten-free entertainment crackers. They're just tiny little guys. Crumple them up on top. Just place them in a bag and just start crunching them. You can use a bottle. I've got my, my water bottle here. This comes in handy for all kinds of things. I always have water on hand by the stove. On top. 
like that and pop it in the oven and poof there were two into the oven they go at 400 degrees just enough to brown that up a little bit for our next magic trick we're going to take these beautiful organic pre-washed giant brussels sprouts and we're going to put them with some broccoli also organic again why do we do organic we do it for the thin things these things that get heavily sprayed because bugs like to eat them so thick skin it's okay buy whatever you want but for the thin stuff that you can poke your nail through you need to do it uh, organic in my book so here you go you cannot wash off the pesticides and herbicides that have been sprayed on bugs and, and plants that go down into the soil and then the plant drinks it up. So that's why we need to buy it organic without those things being added to the soil or sprayed on them. So we're going to slice those up. One of the fun things we like to do with these little Brussels sprouts is to snack on them while we're watching a movie instead of popcorn. You just peel them off one at a time, one little layer at a time, pop them in your mouth, rinse them really good and just eat layers and layers of them while you're watching a movie and it keeps you entertained for hours this is kind of a take off of a dish we used to enjoy at the salt grass back in the day and it was just the roasted uh, brussels sprouts with a maple glaze super simple just cut off the tough end and then slice them thin to soften these up a little bit we're going to add them to a pan a little bit of water Cover them with a lid, let them steam up just a little bit, and then we're going to let the water evaporate and add the maple syrup. I've transferred them over into a bigger pot so that I could add in the broccoli at the same time. You want that to get nice and fork tender barely so that it can evaporate off. For the glaze, we're going to use some organic reduced balsamic vinegar and some sugar-free Mrs. Buttersworth. I don't have any pure maple when this is gone, which has been lasting me forever. I mean, like over a year and a half, I think now. Um, when it's gone, I'll get some pure maple. We're gonna do equal parts. Stir it together. Got the sweet and the sour kind of together. Okay, so we have strained the, uh, wa the steam water off of the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts. The reason why we do that, uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli are two of the 15 cruciferous vegetables that have oxalic acids that disrupt your ability to absorb uh, vitamins. And um, I think it's vitamin C, A, and D. And it also have, they also have natural goitrogens, which disrupt your thyroid. So you always want to steam them and throw away the water, uh, slightly blanch them or boil them and throw away the water and then go from there. So we're going to add them to the uh, maple syrup and the balsamic vinegar and give it a toss. It just coats everything so beautifully. We're going to dump this out on parchment paper on a baking pan that we can put under broil. If you have any extra parchment paper hanging around, go ahead and trim that off so that it doesn't get uh, start burning too much in the under the broiler. Okay, it's ready to go in. And our pans of beautiful au gratin potatoes are ready to come out. I must be getting very hungry because I just switched that over to air fry so it'll go quicker. Isn't that gorgeous? Voila! Our gratin potatoes with maple roasted broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Enjoy. Yum, yum. Okay. All right. Any questions on that recipe? The red oh. peppers look shiny. I assume they don't have oil, right? No, they're packed in water. Uh, I've checked that every time I buy them. I know you can get them in oil, but I've always, always, always packed them in uh, water, got them packed in water. So um, I think in general, I just had a raw one yesterday that we sliced up and it was even shiny. So I know exactly what you're looking at there, but uh, it says it's packed in water. Um, the goitrogen thing, talking about blanching the uh, cruciferous vegetables and throwing the water away, where I like to throw that water is in the garden. 
great for the garden, not so good for us. So uh, you don't have to waste it completely by throwing it down the drain, although I have been known to do that a couple of times, uh, but I do like to throw it out on the grass or in the garden, okay? So uh, next with that, we decided to do another one of our, our chocolate cakes that uh, it was Easter is when we were making that meal Sunday. So um, let me show you the next one back here, back to my channel. And we did the cake the other day and I did something a little it's bit Easter. different this time. And so to do something a little extra special, it's All Easter. Right. And so to do something a little extra special today, we're going to make a cake. I'm currently mashing the Asian purple with the white center potatoes that have been cooked yesterday. And they're so creamy. They also make a guilt-free pudding. Um, you can also use regular cooked sweet potatoes that have been chilled overnight. Again, we chill them overnight, the sweet potatoes and the regular potatoes, to make them a resistant starch. They get a little bit firmer, more like potato salad texture. But you can use them in so many things that would normally require eggs and oil and milk and dairy stuff like that that we are not eating. We don't want that toxin stuff in our body. Because I want this a little bit more fluffy and light versus a um, fudge brownie kind of texture, I'm going to be adding a little bit more applesauce than normal. Usually I'd only order uh, add about a quarter cup to replace some of the oil type texture. But um, it's just applesauce, unsweetened applesauce. In fact, this is some that my daughter made. And it is just straight up from the tree and mushed. It's delicious and cooked down. Looks like about a little over a cup. Maybe a cup and a quarter that was in there. If you saw my YouTube video from a couple of weeks ago, we also made this live on our luncheon that we do every Wednesday on Zoom for free. Now we're going to add in a gluten-free cake mix. You can use any kind you want. I've tried all of them. I'm also going to be doing a demonstration where we do it with just straight raw cocoa. I just haven't got to the store to get the raw cocoa, but uh, we'll do it that way as well. Keep watching. I got that all dumped in there. Just keep stirring it around. doesn't take long. It mixes it up. Now this is the perfect texture at this stage if you want to do it like brownies. I'm going to pop them in my little tiny 24 hole silicone cupcake pan. They're only about an inch big like a potato like a brownie bite size um, and that would be great but I think I want a cake texture so I'm going to add a little bit more moisture to it. Let me see what I've got. I found a can of pure 100% pumpkin. Now you don't have to worry about buying pumpkin organic because it's one of those vegetables or fruits that actually it's a fruit because it's seed bearing uh, that um, has a really thick rind or skin and the bugs don't really bother it. So you don't have to worry about buying it organic like you don't have to worry about buying organic watermelons or um, avocados, things like that. Forgot to turn the camera back on, but you can see the orange that I'm mixing in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I despise cleaning cake pans, and I despise cooking with aluminum. So to protect in a cheap aluminum pan that just is here and available, we put some parchment paper, enough to cover up and down the sides. And what we trimmed off, we're going to put cut in half and put it along the edges here. It'll look about like that. Tap that down just a little bit more. Okay. Dump it in the pan. And the best part about eating this way, meat, dairy, including eggs, oil-free, is you can lick the bowl and not feel guilty or get sick from salmonella from raw eggs. Looking good. And into the oven it goes at 
350 degrees. Following the box instructions, a 13 by 9 pan needs to bake for 30 to 33 minutes. In it goes. It's got a minute left. Comes out pretty clean, but we're going to leave it in there for just a little longer. Okay, I put it in for another 20 minutes. And it's just fudgy, but it's not going to be bad when you cut it. Yummy! Yummy for your tummy! Okay, after it came out, I tipped it out onto the rack for it to cool. Looks great. It's got a good moist texture to it. Yay! We're going to just put some of that lovely chocolate hummus frosting on it that we used in our video on YouTube recently. Occasionally growing up, my mother would make a cake in a sheet pan and just frost it and leave it in the pan. But I want to be a little bit more fancy than that, and it's not really that tough. We're going to whack this thing in half. We're going to stack it. Yes, we are. What's the fun in eating a single layer cake when you can get twice as much chocolate hummus frosting by cutting it in half? Look at that. Did that turn out gorgeous or what? Happy Easter to you. Tune in to our next video where we're going to make potatoes a gratin to go with this bad boy. Check out the starchlady.com. All right. So now, um, that one, um, I did them out of order, obviously, of how I made them because I was making the cake. Well, make, I have my priorities. Got to get the cake going, you know. Uh, that cake, okay, so finished, it was 9 by 13, okay. It was eight and a half inches wide by the, well, I guess it was nine this way and, and half a 13. What does that be? About six or so. Anyways, it made a two layer cake about this big. And the three of us, Don and my husband and I, we had that three different days. We just finished the last of it last night because we did it like human beings in restaurants where we just sliced off a piece of cake that fell over, okay? Instead of in the day where it's like, okay, there's three of us, whack, whack, you all get a third of the cake and enjoy, and here's some ice cream to go on top. So didn't do it that way. We ate it like human beings with just the slices, probably about an inch wide, and we did that three times, which would be exactly nine, so yeah. Um, and it had the, the frosting on the top and the sides, and it had a layer in the middle, and it was like eating real life cake. Now, my husband and Don like it on a plate with a fork. I'm still the person who likes to put in a bowl with some almond milk on top of it. So call me weird. I get to all that trouble just to turn it into this mush in a bowl, but that's kind of how I like it. So, all right. So then what did I do with all that leftover cheese sauce? Let's go and see what I did with that. All right. So we're going to shrink this one down. Do, 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 do. Well, let me shrink this down. Okay, so I missed the, how did you do that chocolate icing? Uh, at the store, you can buy in the hummus section. They have a chocolate oh, okay. hummus. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Easy peasy. Cinchy catinchy. It's not going to let me do that if I do that. So hold on a second. I have to go over here and make that go away. There we go. And now we're going to go back. All right, let's do this. Don't mind me, I just work here. All right, let's see. All right, back to my channel. And then last but not least, what do you think I made with the leftover cheese sauce? Anybody want to guess? Mac and cheese. Did you just eat it Did right out of the bowl? <laughs> I think you posted it on Instagram, that's why. Oh, I did, I did. I did. love yes. this bonza made from right, cheese. So here we go, let's do this one. It's I was. Okay, so here we go. It's the time. Love this bonza made from chickpeas. Great stuff going on there. High in fiber, natural proteins, plant-based proteins, the only kind that are necessary. Look at that. Potassium, magnesium, iron, calcium, vitamin D. No vitamin D, but the calcium and iron 
and potassium and magnesium looking great. Got it in our pot. Should be nice and boily now. Yep, there it is. Give it a stir. This is the penny pasta. Oh, nice and squishy. Good. Got it. Good job. Okay. Looks great. We're going to strain it now. Nice and drained. Now we're going to add the cheese sauce that we made yesterday. It's still nice and gooey from our cheese uh, uh, gratin potatoes last night. And it's cold, so it's pretty darn thick. But as you put it in and stir it around, it'll get just perfect. Like that. Get it stirring around. There is absolutely no need for Velveeta when you got something that's that creamy and delicious. Made from cauliflower, roasted red bell peppers, garlic and onion powder, little tapioca starch to make it thick. But even if you just made it with the sauce, it is absolutely phenomenal. I'm dumping in the leftovers from a couple of nights ago where this is the um, also the gluten-free bonza pasta with the frozen vegetables and it's got the white cheesy sauce. We've also used a gluten-free mushroom soup. Absolutely perfect. Look at that. Look at that. To mine I'm going to add a little bit of sumac which is a great antioxidant and it also helps to reduce inflammation for like heart disease and things like that so good stuff great flavor adds a brilliant little color to it and i hope you enjoy all right so i got that video down to two minutes and 18 seconds so oh, i forgot to get rid of the thingy there Ta -da! all right get rid of youtube over there back to the video here okay all right any questions on any of those recipes can you, you come here and cook for me <laughs> absolutely if i was coming up that far with them this uh summer i would definitely uh take you up and, and make you a an afternoon meal but um, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. And, and you notice how I use leftovers, what, two or three times and made different things out of it? Yeah, girl, that's what I'm talking about. Making it as easy as possible. I, as much as I like to cook, I don't like to cook, you know, and I, and I love it. I, you know what I hate the most? The cleanup. Making those three little videos, I filled the entire dishwasher. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think, I think uh, um, that's probably the thing I dislike about cooking the most is the cleanup. But uh, if I was really cool and wore an apron and was on the, you know, um, uh, Martha Stewart show or something, and I cleaned and put my dishes into the dishwasher as I went, she ain't doing that either. She's showing them down below the camera and they're picking them up and somebody else is doing that for her. So <laughs> anything that we can do with the leftovers, the better. Uh, we actually took some leftover potatoes because uh, we had a few extras left on uh, one more potato we had left over. We sliced that up and cooked it with onion and broccoli for breakfast the day after that. So, I mean, we're talking about potatoes, the same batch out of the crock pot. And I did probably four, me four days worth of meals out of there with those, those potatoes and still have some leftover yellow golden potatoes. So. Um, easy, easy stuff. What are you looking at, Sam? What is that? What is that? A claw. Is that a claw? That's an igu um, the iguanas. Oh, wow. So it's like a zoo, not just an aquarium with, with fish and stuff. Yeah. And if I wanted to go in, I could go in and touch them, but oh, I'm not right now. Wow. Wow. Okay. And you can feed them and all that. It's all cool. You'll have to yeah. text me the address because maybe I can take Leroy there for a date. Now that yeah. he's retired, we have to get creative and doing fun things. And his idea of fun is the same as it was when he was working all those years. He wants to just sit and watch TV or take a nap. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love this place. I, nice. I really do. And is it pricey? The, 
Um, no, not at all, not at all. And they have birds and I'm going towards the birds and you can feed the birds and they poop on you and all that. But <laughs> We did that no. at the, the zoo. They'd come up and sit on your shoulder and drink the little nectar out of your cup. Yeah, exactly. I, I love it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's not where he belongs. Obviously, this one's not where he belongs. But yeah, I love this. Trying to capture him before he escapes. <laughs> yeah, they're like bribing oh, him with back food. Where you belong. Yeah, uh -huh. that's awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, any plans for this week besides getting out and moving a little bit more? Your weather's got to be warming up a little bit now, eh? Yeah, we're going, especially me, which we're going to the zoo tomorrow night and listen to music. Nice, nice. Okay. It should be 66 degrees. We'll see if I need to wear long johns or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Um, this morning, I was going to try and get to a free class that my little town was offering. I'm, I'm still in shock at how this little town operates, and they've got like festivals and parades and activities and barbecues that go on like on a regular basis that you gotta like almost check the website every day to see what new things popping up on there but this morning there was a free class at the gymnasium at the high school and it was about depression it was called uh it's okay not to be okay just we don't want to stay that way or something like that and i thought i have oh, a shirt that says that <laughs> you have a shirt it's okay that says to that? Not be, yeah that says it's okay to not be okay Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I really wanted to go and get some insight because I get depressed quite often. Um, I don't know why it's just something that happened with empty nesting and, and I do much better when there's people in the house, like I said. Um, but, um, I have a lot of clients that for different reasons, they, they have depression and I wanted to go get some insight on that. And I'm just kicking myself that my other class for our CEUs for our class three water treatment license, uh, overlapped. And uh, so um, I couldn't leave Leroy here by himself and because he's the one that has to do his renewal right now. And so I couldn't get out in time because it finished at nine and the other class started at nine. So I was going to miss it. But uh, anyways, um, do what do you guys do if you get a down day? Uh, what, what's your go to for getting yourself out of a funk? I eat. <laughs> okay is your house i don't think that's what we're supposed to do <laughs> is it is your well it depends on what she's eating is your house start solution safe is it a, is it a safe environment that what you grab is not going to kill you sometimes sometimes okay uh leroy came home with the double stuffed gluten-free oreos again the other day uh made by glutino and uh kept saying but they're gluten-free but they're gluten-free and it's like they're also highly processed <laughs> yeah exactly i was gonna say no Rosemary, you cannot eat that no it's i not know right good. so no, so once well. a week diane i don't know if you knew this but they're still doing that weekly uh starch ovarian group with dr mcdougall that's free i just got on it again today and it's every Wednesday morning at 10 central time. And um, they were reading the starch solution though, weren't they? Yeah, they started reading a little bit at a time. And today they were reading the section on uh, pages uh, 174, I think it is. Um, yeah, I think it's 174 to 184 about adding salt or sugar to your uh, sweeteners and sauces to your food to make them more palatable. And I didn't know, I have not been on there in months. I mean, it's I been a either. long time. And uh, so they are like halfway through the book now. Wow. And that's where they were today. And uh, Lonnie read the one about the salt. And then I read the one about the sugar. And I uh, most of the finish of that one. And um, I thought it was a great idea, but I wanted to share with you what they had uh, my favorite part of that whole section, and I think I've read this whole section too before. How many of you have the Starch Solution book? Do y'all have the book? Carolyn, that's going to be your next prize. I do not. Solution. I never got my prize. I have the audio version. 
You have the audio version. Okay. Yeah. So this is a chapter. Let's see the facts about food, salt and sugar, the scapegoats of the Western diet. And it is section or chapter. Let's see. It's chapter 12, salt and sugar, the scapegoats of the Western diet. It starts on page 171. And my favorite, favorite underlying quote here, and, and if you've ever seen me reading my books, I'm, I'm like the red, red pen lady. I'm like all over it. I was taking a class with Don, our technician, and his books are pristine. I don't even think he breathes on those pages. And I'm like doodle. I mean, there's no room left on my notebooks. You know, I mean, they're just everywhere in the margins and all over the words. But anyways, this part right here, it says, as I quote, so what if you enhance these healthy starches with familiar sauces you have enjoyed your whole life? Well, let me, let me start that paragraph again. Along with salt, a little sweetness goes a long way towards making foods taste great. At least at first, you may find corn, beans, potatoes, and rice a little bland compared to what you're used to eating. So what if you enhance these healthy starches with familiar sauces you've enjoyed your whole life? If adding barbecue, blueberry, curry, ketchup, marinade, pasta, uh, raspberry, salsa, steak, or a sweet and sour sauce keeps you eating plenty of healthy starches, I'm all for it. That's what he says. And so um, basically um, what it's saying is, you know, this isn't a torture diet. But where I get off is I go a little bit too crazy with the sauces and the dressings. So I have to be very careful that my house is stocked with like the, um, uh, what do you call them, Sam? Skinny girl uh, dressings that are the lower. Um, yeah, you know, skinny not, girl. Not, non-dairy, yeah, skinny girl, non-dairy. Um, yeah. But we do always have sweet and sour in the house. We also get a non-sweet barbecue sauce. I think it's uh, Willie's uh, unsweetened barbecue sauce or something like that. And, um, you know, my kids, when they were helping me re redo my pantry before they left, it was like their gift to me. Uh, they took all of my, all, and I'm talking all of my pastas, lentils, beans, rice, anything that was like that. And they put it in one giant bucket. Well, I had them in individual buckets. Pasta was here, lentils was here, beans were here. To me, that was easier to, to um, get to and know what I needed to buy, right? It took me to get that penny pasta out of that bucket, which is down in the bottom corner of the pantry now. It took me probably five minutes to dig through there trying to figure out where, which corner of that giant bucket it was in. So I love their help, but they took my little containers and they put in all my skinny girl sauces in one and you know my barbecue sauces in another and my mustards in another because I had so many of them and they thought it was funny because they were I guess I thought I didn't have enough and I kept buying them at the store and I had so many that um, my new shelves aren't solid they're like the wire racks and the bottles were tipping over okay and so I got some sheets to go on them to keep it, you know, the hard plastic uh, pantry sheets so they wouldn't do that. Well, instead of them using that, they just took all the sauces and put them in these individual buckets and put all the grains and stuff together. So I'm going to flip that. I'm going to fix the shelves so that we can see rows of skinny girls so I can know exactly how many I need and the, the vegetable broths and things like that. Um, separate them on the shelf that won't tip over and separate out those grains again. But, you know, just a little pantry tip, you know, to keep yourself organized and stuff like that. But I am in shock, absolutely in shock that they could take those eight bins and fill them up with jars of sauces that I had bought. Um, some of them are wonderful and some of them not so wonderful, I'm guessing. So um, we did buy some things when they were here that we wouldn't normally eat. And I thought I'd given it all to my youngest son when he moved to uh, Conroe. But um, I, there was a few still in there. So anyway, that's my goal this week is to walk more and to uh, keep it more simple. I want to see that scale moving. I, I'm proud to say that I've been staying the same. I have not lost weight and I haven't gained weight. So I've plateaued 
long enough. It's time to get my butt up and moving. And I think by starting and, and recounting my steps again, tracking that down. Caroline, how many steps a day do you get on average? I haven't been looking lately, but I think it's still like at least, I don't know. It's over 10, right? More than 10, more than 10 for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good, at least two miles. I think it's, I have to remember what the script is in the Remember the Titans. It's 5,160 or whatever it is. Steps makes a mile, you know, um, or feet. Or I don't know what that is, but um, but yeah, I, I want to be able to get out and do some more like that. What did you think of the format of the cooking? Did you like the faster version of the cooking demo or do you like to watch me actually making it? Oh, I like that. And I don't think we missed anything by you editing it. Yeah. So yeah, like my editing consists of pausing it. <laughs> what, Sam? I like this sped up one. Okay, good. Yeah, I thought that would be a little bit easier because that cake thing would have probably taken 18 minutes and it took 2.18 seconds to get it done on the video like that. And what I did is at each stage, I just paused the video and then... Um, started it back up again so there wasn't a lot of editing involved it went really quick to upload and so i think i might do that again this week if it's okay with you guys i'll, I'll if I, i'm making something cool and exciting i'll i'll video it for you okay all right well you guys have a great week it's 3 14 i'll let you go but um always text me throw me a message and let's get those pictures up there posted caroline thank you thank you thank you you posted a lot of good pictures this week I love that, Diane. I want to see some food. I don't care if it's the same food every single day. I want to see some food. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm gonna finally post mine. I I promise I will do it to, today. Okay. Today. Today. Of course. Yeah. It's all the same food over and over again. I'm wondering. I was gonna talk to you about. No, no, no. Don't go that way. Um, he's going the wrong way. Um, I was gonna. One. You know. Oh, pretty. I was thinking, um, I'm, I'm feeling a little um, like dizzy here and there, things like that. Do you think I'm not getting enough somethings that I'm, or should I go to the doctor? Or Are you I, still I've, I've like dizzy a doctor. lot? No, like not a lot, but, but every, you know, every now and then I am getting dizzy and I'm just like wondering if maybe I'm not having enough variety, you know, because Seriously, all I eat is the same foods over and over again. All right. So. Um, well, let me see the pictures so I can keep um, an observant on that. But it sounds like an electrolyte issue. Are you still doing your lemonade with the salt in it? Yeah, I am. Okay. And how much salt are you getting in a day? I don't know. Enough, I'm sure, because I, I, I always eat it with, with the... Uh, yes, I will. Uh, um yeah yeah i do try, so it's all good try to notice what that is because we don't want it to be more grams than you need uh and we don't want it to be too little of grams than what you need so it's one gram for every 20 pounds of body weight which is equivalent to about a quarter teaspoon so if i was okay. 140 pounds that would be seven grams which would be a teaspoon and a uh two and and Three fourths, a teaspoon and three fourths. So short of two teaspoons for the day, maximum for the day. So you want to use one teaspoon possibly for your your beverage to share throughout the day, your lemonade. But then you'll have the other to sprinkle on top of your food, and always put it on top of your food so that you get the best benefit out of it, and it hasn't cooked into it, and then you add too much because it doesn't taste, you know, like it's got enough flavor, you know, at that yeah. time. Okay. 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 Uh, Okay. And keep an eye on it though. It could also be uh, fluid in your ear. Remember that squeaking you have in your ear? I know you've had yeah. that for a long time. Yeah, um, I still do. I well, always do. Come over to the house and I'll candle your ears and we'll pull that extra fluid out of your ears. Okay. Yep. Because All right. That, that'll throw off your equilibrium more than anything is having fluid behind the ears. And uh, it's usually one ear will have more fluid than the other. So when we candle, we not only get the wax out, where we get any extra fluid out at the same time. So okay. um, I've got some candles here at the house if you want to come out. Okay. Okie dokie.
All right, sweetie. Thank Love you. you. All right, guys. Love you. All right. Talk to y'all soon. Bye, right, guys. Take care. Uh, encourage, right. Help me encourage the other people in the group to get on here. I want to see like a bazillion people on here having fun and getting healthy. And that they're just kind of sitting back and just observing us stay healthy. So, okay. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.